In this video, we are going to talk about why you want to be alone, but you hate the fact that you always feel lonely. I am Pauline and I am so happy you are here because you are not the only one. You are not alone in this feeling of wanting to be alone, but also hating the fact that you always feel lonely. And for the longest time, I believed I was just an extreme introvert. And maybe you have that too, that I just, I had such a hard time being around people when I would be around people afterwards, I would be exhausted. And so I thought I was just very much an introvert. And I, th I think I still am a little bit more on the introverted side than the extroverted side. But healing the fearful avoidant attachment style has really, has really changed all of this so much. The feeling lonely, but also the not wanting to be alone uh, all the time anymore. Because that's what it was. I wanted to be alone all the time. Pretty much all social interactions just felt exhausting. Even with my partner, my boyfriend, then boyfriend, now husband, who was amazing and loving. Even that felt uh, tiring, exhausting in a way. And uh, I, I just needed to be alone a lot. Which I also judged as being not good because if you have found the one don't you always want to be with them um and maybe you recognize all of this because you definitely are not the only one i think a lot a lot of people are struggling with this and it feels so contradicting right you you don't want to feel so lonely but you also want to feel alone so why is that let's dive into it of course, you have people who are more extroverted and introverted, but I think what gets overlooked so much of the time is the uh, the role that trauma plays in being extroverted or introverted. Extroverts usually don't have trauma around social interactions. And I say usually because nothing is black and white and I can't generalize for everyone, but they have less trauma <laughs> than uh Possibly the introverted people do. And there are genuine introverts that don't have trauma around social interactions or connection and still just love being alone. And that's the way they kind of recharge their batteries. There's nothing wrong with that. This is not a, uh, it's not good to be an introvert and you have to heal so that you can be an extrovert. Absolutely not. I am not saying that ever. I just want you to know that it could be that you wanting to be alone all the time can come from trauma, which means that can he be healed. So if you are noticing that wanting to be alone a lot is not really serving you anymore, it's not making you happy, and you, you are craving more um, companionship or, or social interactions, but just don't know how to do that without being exhausted, that's what this video is for. So when you notice that you want to be alone a lot, it can just mean that you have a lot of negative associations and pain around social interactions and connection. This can come from childhood. Usually it starts in childhood and it, start with, it starts with the connection with your parents. Because if your attachment to your parents is secure and safe and warm and loving, what you learn is that it's easy and it's nourishing actually to be in contact or in connection with other people. And so when that is your first experience with connection, then you tend to seek out friendships that also nourish you and that feel good and um, that actually give you energy. And so that kind of builds on each other. The other way around is that when you, the first experiences you have with connection with your parents, so that's the first seven years of your life usually, they are negative and there are a lot of negative associations around that then you tend to already feel more self-conscious, um, already feel like you have to perform more in social interactions, and you take that into relation relationships and friendships. And so it, it just feels like all social interactions feel this way. It, they don't nourish you. They're, you feel tense around other people. You feel very self-conscious. You feel insecure around other people. And that has nothing to do with you personally. It's not that you are just like this or this is your character. That comes from trauma and it can come from very early childhood trauma. That still can be healed. There is no way that you are doomed forever. This definitely can be healed. So many negative associations, the more negative associations have, 
the more social interactions just feel so heavy and so hard and so complicated and you just don't really know how to do that and you always second guess yourself and you always think oh I'm, I must be doing everything wrong and they will leave me and then I will be rejected and just that all of that all of those thoughts all of that emotional charge around social interactions it's so logical that you would want to be alone because for you it going out and having social interactions and connecting with other people is like oh it's almost like climbing mount everest every single time it makes so much sense that you just want to be alone where you can't be rejected you don't have to perform you don't have to do anything to please anyone so it makes sense it's so logical and i don't ever want you to feel bad about it or be hard on yourself about it but then you notice that you also feel lonely and you don't really want that but you don't know how to connect to people in a way that is actually that is nurturing and that is fulfilling and that is going to alleviate that loneliness because what happens when you have trauma around social interactions and connection um, when you were younger you start performing you start feeling like you have to perform in a certain way to be worthy of love of attention of um, just people talking to you and being with you and hanging out with you and so as long as you feel like you have to perform you can't really connect to other people because performing and connecting are just two completely different things and again this doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you or that you're doing it wrong it just means that you haven't learned how to connect because when you would have had a secure attachment when you would have had parents who for those first seven years at least um gave you that warm nourishing connection that you have always deserved then you would know how to regulate with others and that means that when we're small children it's hard for us to regulate our own emotions that's why you have the tantrums when you're a toddler that's just a very normal phase of growing up um your brain is developing but also your nervous system is developing and um in a secure attachment you kind of mirror or copy your parents in how they regulate themselves so when your parent is able to regulate their own emotions which means that they don't feel overwhelmed by their emotions but they have a way to process them and they allow all emotions to be there and they have a way to to calm themselves down that's what you kind of uh, adopt or or install in yourself by regulating with your parents again and again and again so when you have a tantrum when you are just overwhelmed with big emotions and your parent is able to stay with you calmly and guide you through it even by just breathing and being present not really saying anything that teaches you how to do that and that helps you um, regulate yourself but it's also a beautiful thing that you co-regulate with your parent which means you have connection in that moment which is nourishing nurturing guiding so when you've experienced that as a child you you know that other people are safe they can actually help you when you feel overwhelmed when you feel negative emotions but when the opposite is true which is true for people with an insecure attachment and i talk about the fearful avoidant attachment style a lot on this channel you have the opposite experience you have probably experienced that when you were overwhelmed with emotions you were rejected you were scolded at you were lashed out at so a parent would actually escalate the situation instead of calming it down and calming you down which meant that in moments that you don't really feel good you retreat because being in contact with other people is super scary that makes so much sense and then apart from that a lot of fearful avoidant parents also kind of expect you to perform in a certain way behave in a certain way but before perform in social settings in a, a certain way so uh you create this really um this image of how you should be of how you should feel i should always be somewhat happy not too happy because then you're elated and it's too much but also i shouldn't be grumpy i shouldn't be um sad i shouldn't be frustrated i shouldn't have any negative uh, feelings i should be somewhat happy that's the safe spot usually <laughs> and that just takes a lot if you're demanding of yourself to always be somewhat happy in 
in social interactions without having learned how to regulate yourself and co-regulate with others that is very very tiring to do it's it just takes a lot of effort it takes a lot of energy um and just feeling like you have to perform to not be rejected to not be abandoned to not be found weird which is something a lot of fearful avoidance feel they are um that also takes a lot of energy so those first interactions really do uh, have an influence on how you interact with people when you've grown up again this doesn't mean that you are doomed for life when you have an insecure attachment style absolutely not you can heal this you can heal this and um and have those beautiful connections and have connections be nurturing and nourishing and that's what again you've always deserved the fact that your parent didn't do that was on them it wasn't on you it was never your fault it was in a way just dumb luck it wasn't personal and so when you heal an insecure attachment style, this is one of the things that is just, it's so um, eye-opening, almost like another world opens up. Like, oh, I can, I can just be with other people without being super self-conscious and thinking I'm doing everything wrong every single second. And I can just enjoy being with people without feeling like I have to be absolutely perfect for them not to reject or abandon me. And I can actually feel charged, recharged, like have energy after being with people. Wow, that's new. <laughs> so <clears throat> that is absolutely possible. And it's not even, you're not even that far away from that. It, it doesn't take years and years to, to heal that. It doesn't have to. But when you, when you've had those negative experiences when you were younger, it, relationships can feel threatening they can feel overwhelming they can feel suffocating um you can feel a fear of failure and you can feel a fear of getting hurt or betrayed and that will make you want to retreat from the world of course of course that will make you want to retreat from the world so when you're noticing that that's how relationships feel and because of that you're introverted like you you want to retreat and stay at home that means that there's trauma and that can be healed and it could be that when you heal all of that you still might be more introverted than extroverted, which means that you love being alone, you love being with yourself, with your own thoughts. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that I want you to experience what it is like to choose to do that because you want it and not out of fear of other people. So being an introvert, you can still, you can have a few really good friendships that are extremely nurturing and nourishing. Uh, and fulfilling and have a lot of alone time so it's not that when you heal this all of a sudden you become this super extroverted person and you want to be around people all the time so what changed for me is that when we would have friends over when I knew we would go see friends or friends would come over I I would almost dread that for days not because I didn't like those friends I I our friends are amazing still um but I was just so afraid that I would mess something up. I felt this huge pressure to perform in a certain way. I always felt like they would be mad at me for forgetting something, forgetting their birthday or not being attentive enough to something. So there was just a lot of negative associations around it. And then when they would be there, I would want everything to be perfect. So the house had to be completely clean and, and uh, tidied up and I would have to have all the most amazing snacks out and blah, 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 just be the perfect hostess. Then when they leave, I'd be, I would just crash. And usually I would get almost a meltdown. Like I would cry. It would, it was just too much. So many, um, so many things that came up that I, I couldn't process at all. Fast forward to now, having healed all of this, I am completely okay if, uh, friends come over unannounced uh, even if my house is kind of a mess uh, and I have nothing in the house to eat because I know it doesn't matter. My friends are there for me and they love me no matter what, even if my house is a mess and I don't have anything to eat. And it's just, it's all so much lighter and it's all so much uh, easier. And I, I just love being with people now and talking and I don't have that self-consciousness anymore at all. I just don't second guess myself at, maybe at all is like very black and white maybe 
it used to be every single social interaction I would have that during the interaction and then later on I would think oh my gosh I, I said this what if they think that and now I might have that like once every three months where I say something and I'm like oh that didn't really feel good I'm not sure how that how that came across and sometimes I just ask them and sometimes I I just process that myself and I think oh well I learned that when I say stuff like that that just doesn't feel good with me it doesn't align with me and my values so it's it's nothing anymore compared to what it was and now I actually when we've had a weekend where we've seen a lot of friends um in the past I would be, I would be exhausted I would start my week exhausted and now it's like oh, that was such a good that was such a good weekend we had so much fun <laughs> It's a, it's a world of difference. And that's what I really wish for you to experience because people are not scary inherently. You have people who are hurt. You have people who have trauma and have pain, but you choose who your friends are. And even people who have pain and have trauma can obviously heal and have beautiful relationships. Um, but there are also so many beautiful people who are just not judgmental at all, who won't criticize you, who don't care what your house looks like, who don't care what you, how you dress, what you look like, anything that you feel like you have to perform at. They don't care. They just want to be with you. And I wish for you to experience that nourishing feeling of connection, of, of really just having a beautiful conversation, being in the moment, not second guessing yourself, not being self-conscious but really being in it and then afterwards thinking oh that was that was such a beautiful conversation I really enjoyed that it it has changed my life so much having healed this part of of friendships really um and interactions with other people so the fearful avoidant attachment style does not only influence your romantic relationships uh, it influences every area of your life usually not with everybody but with a lot of people um and therefore, that's why I'm so, so passionate about healing the fearful avoidant attachment style, because it is something you have had for your whole life and you don't even know how much better it could be. So that's what we're doing in my online program, Healed and Happy. We're going to the roots of the fearful avoidant attachment style. And we're healing that because you having this attachment style doesn't mean that you have to have that for the rest of your life. It's not, it's not your character. It's not you. It's something that you can heal and it doesn't have to take years. You can have a completely different life in, in three to six months. And I want to get you to that place of being healed, not keeping working on yourself, working on yourself, working on yourself and not really getting anywhere, but actually getting to that place where you're like, oh, this is healed. I can look back on how I was in social interactions and think, wow, that, that really was exhausting. No wonder I wanted to be alone. And then be in that place where wow, now I really truly enjoy it. Could it. Can it be this good? Can it feel this good? Yes, it can. And that's what I wish for you. If you are interested in that, you can find the link in the description below. As always, I am so incredibly happy you are here. No matter where you are in your healing journey, you don't have to heal to be worthy for other people. You are worthy as you are right now. I just want you to experience love and peace and freedom and all the good things in life. That's what I wish for you. Thank you for being here. I will see you in the next one. Healed and Happy is a tailor-made online program where me and my team personally guide you through healing the roots of a fearful avoidant attachment style. 